Uh, something like that is a, a way to play Bewitched, Bothered and Bewildered. Uh, welcome to this video where I'm going to take you through the song and uh, show you the chords and just give you a couple of uh, things that you could do with the right hand and the left hand. A bit of theory thrown in there as well. Perfect timing. Thank you very much, mister. Uh, I couldn't get rid of him earlier, so I had to <laughs> leave him. He, he was always jumping back on. So, um, with that uh, out of the way, in the description box below there are quite a lot of videos as well as in the comment section there's the timestamps for this video it won't be too long and uh, those videos are going to help you with any content which might be a bit too complicated in this video because i can't always repeat the same stuff in every video um, so i'm going to just drop the chord pro progression on you which you will easily pick up and uh, i'll just give you a couple of ideas on what to do so it's kind of a bite-sized video nothing too heavy uh, and this is a request this is going into my song analysis playlist, sorted song analysis playlist, which recently I wrote an article about to promote. Because although you may not want to learn a song, there's still a lot of things that you can learn in the video. So you might be doing yourself a disservice by not watching any of the videos in that playlist just because you don't like the song title. The song is secondary always with me. I always like to highlight other things and use the song as a skeleton. So that article is also in the description box below. And as always, likes, comments, subscriptions are welcome. Have a look at my books, blog, Patreon, podcasts, new playlists, and any other goodies that I have posted. Uh, maybe follow me on, there, on there, Instagram if you want to. I, I post on there sometimes. So uh, this progression I'm going to tell you numerically and I'm going to give you some technical exercises as well as to how to practice different things. So the first one I'm going to give you is you have to know the piece away from the piano on your internal jukebox. If you don't know it in your mind, you can't play it at the piano. So go and listen to lots of versions of this piece, some originals, have a look at the lyrics because that helps. And uh, then you can grab the uh, lead sheet, which I've got also in the description box below in my Google Drive, uh, along with all my other tutorials. With the, it's a free lead sheet, it's like a photocopy, it's written out in jazz format. Um, so, in this song, uh, you've got two ways of looking at this, and I'm quite happy that I can uh, talk about this as my opening theorem. Um, you can look at the chords in two ways. One, six, two, five, one, how surprising. Or one, I'll explain why. I'll do it in the key of C, but we can play around in other keys if necessary. Doesn't matter. Uh, we are major scale masters after all. It can be one or the root, flat second, second, minor, third, and then another chord on the third, and then the fourth. Because of course everything moves up in fourths in jazz. And then after the fourth, it does go up a fourth. <laughs> uh, and then it goes three, six, two, five, one. Again, how unsurprising. So. Uh, let me explain why that is first. The melody you can work out by ear or just follow the single note melody. That's just so easy, I'm not even going to waste my time on it, but you'll pick it up. Uh, because it's jazz, you want to mess around with it anyway, embellish it a bit, decorate it with some ornaments, which we can also talk about in this video. So it's going, basically, and I'll make it more complicated, one. And then it would often go six, I'm playing A minor seven, two, D minor seven, 5G7, you know this stuff probably. But uh, the other way of doing it is like this. You can play one. And you can go to the flat second. Now why? That is still the sixth. You probably have uh, no idea why that's the sixth when the C sharp is not even in the scale of C. Well look, if I put the A on the bottom, which is the sixth, now label these notes in the key of A and we get three. Uh, we get five, we get dominant seven, and we get flat nine, the B flat, because eight, nine, flattened. So, the sh these flat seconds hold diminished. I'm not going to write some of these notes down. Uh, the flat seconds hold diminished is the same as the six with a flat nine, just without the root. But you can put the root in it, but then you'll be, you, you would write that as, you know, A7 flat nine. But without the the root, you would call it C sharp uh, or D flat technically, D flat uh, whole diminished. So same notes, different label. Okay, uh, so you see that in lots of lead sheets. You'll see it written as uh, C sharp or D flat or even they might call it the third because it's in the same diminished group. I have videos on all these things or just write a comment and I'll, I'll answer it. Uh, so sometimes you'll see that as well. Also e, e whole diminished, but it's all the same thing. That is still A7 flat 9. It's just 5, 7, flat 9, 3 in the key of A. There's all these different variations. And sometimes you can even see a, a G whole diminished. 
you just have to realize what they're, what they're hiding. And normally it's the six. So it's going basically one, six, two, five, one, but the six is sometimes it's a flat second. Now that makes it easier to learn because it's going one, flat second is a whole diminished, two, and then the minor is a whole diminished, which is uh, quite nice. I don't want to get into all the theory about that, but you get the idea. So one, there, 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 that's quite nice. And then it's going to go either back to one or three. It's the same notes. If you play the one as a one, it's a major seven. And if you play it as a, th as a three on the E, it looks like E minor seven. It is E minor seven if you put an E in the bass. But in the key of C, that would be three, five, seven, nine. So a major nine, which is very nice. So you can do both. If you're a bass player, you can play a C in the bass, and then that would sound like C major nine. Or you can play an E in the bass, and it will be E minor seven. Two choices. One. I'll do the six. See, it sounds nice as well as that one. They both they both work. They're so close together. Six. Two. Five. One. And then it goes to the augmented, which is a sharp five with a dominant seven. Upper four. And then upper four again to B flat seven. But you can play that in a nice way. I'll tell you that chord in a moment. And then it goes three, six, two, five, one. And then it does another three, six, two, five, one as a turnaround. Five with the augmented, it's nice. And you start again. So uh, let me do it in two ways. I'll do it the other way this time with the C sharp hole diminished. On this E minor 7, you go from the E minor 7, then you have to make it a major third, that's what I didn't say, uh, and then it sounds nice to flatten the 5. But then that shape is actually also C, there's the 3, there's the sharp 5, there's the dominant 7, and there's the 9. That's a nice shape to play on a dominant 7 chord. Uh, it's going up a fourth, C, up to F, major 7. So that's a voicing. Three, seven, nine. Pop in the sharp five. Why not? So you can write these down, but I'll put the chords in the bottom. Oh, you, you've got the lead sheet anyway. Four. Upper four. Now that chord is. This is a voicing again. B flat key. Dominant seven. Three on the D. 6 on the G, which is technically 13, and then you put the 9 in the middle. So 7, 9, 3, 6, or 13, just easier to say 6. Uh, and that's, that's, that works there. And then it just comes back to 3, 6, 2, 5, 1. But that chord can be the whole diminished on the C sharp again, or e, sorry, uh, E flat again, it, it kind of goes backwards. See, it's still, it's still a kind of A shape here. There's still an A about it. It's a minor. It's okay. It's, it's, it's nice. Um, two, uh, five. Now, what am I playing here? I'm just playing the dominant seven of G, the F. The A is the nine. The B is the third. And then it's about to one. Uh, six, two, five, the turnaround. It, it, this song is just three, six, two, five, one, two, five, one. It's, that's all it is. Then it goes into the uh, the next part, which is when it got, when it uh, the second time round. You have to do a quick. Well, it sounds nice to do a quick uh, G minor seven, C seven onto F major seven, which is quite nice. So the second time round. G minor 7 C7, which is 2 5 1 onto the 4, floating 2 5 1 onto the 4 very quickly for a whole bar, and then it does floating 2 5 1 onto the second. Floating just means there's a temporary 1, and that 1 is coming from the master key of the piece. So, of course, we're on C for this. Uh, the second is D, so you're doing its 2 5 1, which is E A D. That's quite nice. So, 2 5 1 to the 4, that's a quick sort of changing tracks. And then another changing tracks to a 2-5-1 onto the 2. 
and then that does a five back to itself and then it will do a five one onto the six floating sort of five one onto the six uh, and then it will go on from there i'll explain that uh, so let's go into that d part oh from the f okay two of the d which is e minor seven flat five sounds nice a7, I'll give you the fancy chords in a moment. A7, which is the 5 of D. D is the second of C. So it's a floating 2, 5, 1 to D. But there's a couple of things you can do here. It sounds nice to land on the D minor 6, because that's the melody note. Often in these jazz songs, the melody note is the fancy chord extension. I know 6 isn't an extension, but it's still a nice, a nice note. It's not a dominant 7. So you can stay on it if you want to. That's safe. And then you can just go to the to the A minor seven to the six if you want to. That would just be a two to a six. But you can have an alternation here. Just do a D minor six to an A seven. Just listen. And it sounds nice also because that F is, is a sharp five or flat thirteen, uh, which sounds nice as a dominant seven sound, which is what it is because it's technically a five one onto the D. So uh, you can play a sort of a with a dominant seven, a third, and play that flat thirteen. Just works perfectly. Or you can have the root just go on the just don't play a six, just play a minor triad with an octave, and then go down to the minor major seven, minor seven, six, that might work, but well, it does. Then go on to the A, the six, which is nice. Uh, so I like to alternate, so I'll alternate. Uh, and then we're going to go to the, this time we're going to the E. So it's only A1, so it's D, A, D. So, so two, six, two, if you want to say it that way. Um, and then it's going to the three and the six. So. That's a 5 1 to itself. E to A is a 5 1. So it's just 5 1s in there. Floating 5 1s. So D. Basically. And then on the E here. But it's nice to play the E7 here with a flat 5. Dominant 7 on top of the octave. Dominant 7 is here. Nice. And that is a 5 1 onto the 6. A is the 6th of C. So you can do that back up to it and alternate again you're alternating with its fifth just like you did with DNA you're now alternating with A and E that they are fifths so uh, but then for two beats you only play that A minus seven then you go up I'm not looking at any sheets by the way this is just in my mind it's very, very easy it will be in your mind in, in a few minutes or hours then it goes to a major third which is nice now this kind of gives me an opportunity to introduce a scale that I've not really talked about before because I don't uh, I don't like scales. Uh, it doesn't mean I don't know them. It means I don't like to make you think about them because scales are very dangerous. Uh, it's like you're handling, you know, some well you can say it either way like a precious diamond or some toxic substance. I'd rather go with toxic substance to be honest um, because people get so caught up in them and the scale tells you what to play instead of you controlling the scale and then leaving it when you don't want it and going into another scale but then it becomes just a big scale uh, thing going on and it's not very nice so because you're not you're not playing uh, I, I need a hoover uh, I need two hoover uh, the um, scales control you but sometimes you can just use one or the notes of it and it sounds quite nice and I think here it's just one of those moments where the uh, half whole diminished scale works uh, that scale is very, very easy. You're just playing whole, uh, half steps and whole steps, starting from, well, anywhere, but we'll do it from C because it sounds nice. Because the, it, that would be a minor to the major third, which sounds nice. And then you just continue that pattern by going, well, you've only done half of it, but the half and then a whole. And if you just drill this pattern, it, you'll see it's very, very easy shape to see, no matter where you start it from. So it, it, it looks like this. You can find millions of videos about that about the scale, 
Uh, I'm just showing you quickly. And then start again. It's, uh, it's a scale of eight notes and uh, it's a very visual pattern on the piano because it's, it's, it's like a sort of a house, like I don't know what you might call it, like a sort of a house. It, like, do you know what I mean? I don't know what the word is. It's like a kind of tent or something uh, over the two black notes, which is very easy to see visually. Then you ignore the F and then you take the two outside black notes with the two inside white notes. I'm just, now of course, when you do this properly, you'll learn the note values, flat second, you know, minor, uh, sharp four, sharp 11, five, six, or you might call it a 13th to make it more jazzy. Uh, you could also call this flat nine and sharp nine, that's often what's done because there's a major third in it, you see. So technically that can't be a minor. So, and there's no D in it, so it's not just a nine. It's as if the, the nine has been modified twice. Just like you're playing root, flat nine, sharp nine, three, sharp 11, five, 13, dominant seven. So it's a very jazzy kind of thing to do and everyone goes on about it, but uh, I try to avoid, avoid all that cliche stuff. But it does work here on this one particular occasion because the next note as well at the other end is a C. It just sounds nice. So this is just one of those rare moments where using that scale does actually work perfectly. So something like uh, from the D to the A, then it goes D to E to A to E to A to the shop to the major to the third, and uh, it works there. It actually really works though, it's quite nice. Uh, I did it as octaves, because octaves are the same as single finger notes, right? For us water pianists, no difference. Uh, so that sounds, that sounds nice. Don't worry about fingering, you'll find your own natural fingering. For me, the thumb is on the E and the G. Easy scale. So, and then, just, then you're doing a regular 2-5 on to C, D, G, D, G, well, the 2-5 of C, the master key, but you're not landing back on C yet, so... Easy enough. 3. Now that's technically a 6, even though it's E-flat, because you've got the A in there, and it's a minor. 2, 5, uh, 1, and start again. So, I mean, it's just such an easy piece to play once you've really got it down. And again, in the description box below, I've written out the chords. You've got the link to the lead sheet, so you can play around with it. Uh, now, just one or two things I might do with the fancier chords, um, or things I do. Uh, there's a nice left hand I do, which is to play the 10th as an open octave. So uh, C to E, that's eight, nine, 10. It can be major or minor. It can be a minor 10. That sounds nice. And you can just do that alone, like, like rhythmically. So when you go up to the C sharp, you'll have, you have to stay on the E because it's a minor tenth this time because it's a whole diminished shape. So you're playing the root and the third as a major or minor, depending. So that would be quite nice. So it sounds nice. And then D to F, D sharp or E flat to uh, F again. Uh, sorry, to, to G flat this time because of the minor. It's a minor twice that time, uh, which is nice because it's major there, minor there. Minor there, minor there, minor there. I mean, don't do it all the time, it's just an idea. It's something to practice, it's quite nice. Um, and then I, of course, do my, my chord, uh, sort of pinky bounce, I call it. So just, I, I, you, I often do that with octaves open. Sometimes, that kind of thing. But sometimes I'll do something called a chromatic, uh, no, a, um, yeah, chromatic drop. So semitone drop, semitone drop. So uh, from above or below, my left hand will, as an octave or single note, will drop onto the note I need. So if you look at the left hand, I'll do it, I'll do it here so you can see it completely. No, I'll do it here, you can still see. Uh, so I'll do like C octave to chord, and then I might go in the bass as an octave, C to C sharp to the chord, and then I might just go uh, D flat to D with single note to the chord and then octave to the chord bass notes. So try, around playing, play, try playing around with that. 
Uh, with the right hand, I also, I also like to fill in the spaces by complementing the chord. So when there's nothing going on, like um, when it goes up to the B flat part, so um, there's just kind of two beats where nothing's really happening. And even in the F, because it just goes, there's nothing happening on that uh, F major seven for a whole bar. It's just, just playing an A melody note. So the right hand, I'll use that example instead actually. On that F, you can just play pairs of notes from the F major 7 or with a 9, with a sharp 11, uh, with a 13. Uh, you can play combinations of notes. So um, you might just do something like uh, I'm going from the C. So I might just go E to C, C and E to G, B and D for the sharp 11 and 13 to the 9 and then maybe just chromatically with a passing tone I'm in the key of F but I put a passing tone and then just go on to the next chord which is E that's why I'm running up to the E and I, I like to do arpeggios sort of rapid arpeggios that's kind of my style how to do that it's all about the thumb I've said this to a few people uh, it doesn't matter what these fingers are because they know what chord to play. It's the precision of the thumb. So your practice should be to play like two or three octaves, left hand, right hand, ascending, descending. Sometimes it will be the ring finger, sometimes it will be the little finger. Uh, you just play the chord in one octave and then stop with the octave jump. So this chord, E half diminished, you want the E to be precise. So that's the exercise and you can do that by stopping instead of doing it instead of doing it as a run you can just go because it's about the precision of that thumb and then coming down that would be with the little finger because that's on the D so that would be because you want that precision of the little finger play, playing <laughs> well, playing at E you want the precision of your little finger playing on the D octave so you play around with that. So if I put those things together and you watch what I'm doing, you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'll put grace notes in like this. I slide off of a note nearby. And uh, but you'll see that when I'm not playing a melody, I'll complement the chord. And my right hand will play a chord completely. My left hand will just play a bass. So the right hand does melody and chord. And sometimes I'll put the melody with the chord, which is quite uh, a nice thing to do. Uh, I'll see if it happens. So just I'll just go from the beginning. So even here, my opening, I went chromatically to the target note and then opened it out as an octave. That is so much more interesting than just going, why not go like that? It's nicer. Semitone up. the C shape which is uh, 3, 7, 9 with the sharp 5 with the G sharp um, and I might let me play the melody with that chord so let me just go into that like that see I'm playing the chord in the left hand I'm playing the, the thumb on the E on the right hand and my melody is raising, rising with the right hand. So the melody was alone, but it complemented the chord. And now we've got all this time to do that B flat. They just play some notes from that B flat seven chord. So I, I don't know what I played there, but it could have been something like a six, five, I think I played an E, that's all I remember really, but to say I could go um, seven, five, uh, flat five or sharp 11. 9, root, and then the next chord, the next chord is E minor 7, so the B is next, so I can just fall up onto that note. Uh, so, uh, well, the second time around you'd go into this G minor 7. See, I did that thing again. What notes am I playing? Anything. I'm not thinking about scales, because most of the notes are going to work. Now, E minor 7. Now, what 
chord am I playing here? This is a nice position. I'm playing an A7, uh, sorry, no, no, I'm not playing it wrong, I'm playing a 7 here, I'm playing a 13 with a flat 9. So the voicing for this is 7, 3, 6. 6 is always 13 when you have a 7. Flat 9 in the middle because why not? I could play it with a 9 and I could also play it with both and have a bit of internal movement. And then I'm going to land on the D minor 7 or whatever chord I'm going to choose. Uh, D minor, maybe just D minor, or D minor 6, isn't it? Then it goes up to this A with, with that melody note, the flat 13, because it's the melody note, so it sounds nice. And that's the 5 of D. And we go to the 3, which is the 5 of A, which is the 6, so it's a 5 1 onto the 6. Left hand just bouncing in one octave for the chord. So there, my right hand went up, up the chord and came back down like using some of the notes of the chord. That's a nice thing to do. You have a shape of the chord and then you, you move around with any, to any note without moving the middle two normally notes. So, okay, that's nice. Now it's to the A7. Now you can do that nice uh, half whole scale. Now here I'm playing notes of the chord. I'm, uh, I'm playing D. I've got the seven, the melody note is the dominant seven. So I'm going D, minus seven in the left hand, rolling the chord open. I've got seven, which is the melody note, so I can whack in some notes in the middle. E is the nine, G is the uh, 11, A is the five. Totally safe notes. Looks like C6, irrelevant, it isn't. The bass is not C, it's D. Totally different note values. And notice how I, how I did that internal movement thing again, but this time with three notes. And then I land on the uh, G just with a third in the middle because it's safe. I could land on the whole triad if I want to. So I'm going chromatically up here. Until I find the melody note, I'm just playing or whatever until I find the melody note, which is on the E minor 7. Little slide down there. Now some individual finger stuff. Now I want to just kind of go up notes of the chord, maybe a blue scale on the D, because I'm on the G, so I might go like that. Just a few notes from the blue scale, because G is in the blue scale of D. It's there, it's, it's the sort of uh, fourth, well it is the fourth. And when I get to the G, I can maybe prepare myself for G augmented, raised fifth, which is a 5-1 chord because we're going back to C. Uh, you know, and I might, I might arpeggio that and come back down. You get the idea, here I'm playing A minor 7, but I'm starting on the 9. I'm not doing that sharp diminished, C sharp diminished. Uh, let me just start again. See, so yeah, I just hit the chord up here because why not? Bit of B flat blues there. I think I played the octave. Maybe the dominant seven. I can't remember. You see, I have no idea what I played. I think I hit the flat five on the blues there, to the root, uh, and then onto the eight, you know, three, six, two, five, one. You know, or you go around onto the two, five, one to go to the second part on the D via the F. Um, so uh, I don't think I need to talk too much about that. Hopefully, I've given you a couple of ideas, enough things to play around with. Uh, there's lots of videos below. I know there's a lot to learn. I know it may seem easy, but um, I, may, I may make it look easy, but uh, I'm kind of playing things which are so common in jazz, which is uh, well, the things I've talked about really, you know, chord, chord tones, one or two notes from a scale, left hand accompaniment styles are often like that. Watch Oscar Peterson, uh, he does that a lot. Uh, not that I'm comparing myself to him in any way whatsoever. Um, right hand chords complement left hand. 
Uh, you can do some running arpeggios. Uh, don't worry about timing, that's another thing. Uh, you can, I, I didn't play all of that thinking about the metronome. I wasn't thinking about uh, one, two, three, four. I mean, I, you know, of course I can and play it, play it in time. And this is also how I'm, I'm, I'm messing around with the melody. I'm not necessarily improvising completely. I'm not playing something completely different. I'm not playing something different. I'm just messing around a little bit and being a bit free. So I'm sort of playing 70, 80% of the melody and filling it in with a couple of fiddly bits. Uh, but that, that was in time, that's my point. But you can just play it freely however you want, just to be a bit more expressive. This is a flat 9 and a flat 13 in the G, in the key of G. So you kind of just mess around with the chords and just like play that chord and just, you know, play that chord, play that chord. That's a tritone substitution. Oh, I shouldn't have played that. But a tritone substitution is just when you play, uh, basically, when you have a 5 1 chord, when you have a 5, which is a dominant 7, you play its flat 5 as a dominant 7 or a major 7, and uh, normally a dominant 7, but sounds nice with a major 7 as well, and then you fall onto the 1, which is nice, because the flat 5 of the 5 is a semitone above the root, so it's very easy to just fall. So that's quite nice. Um, so hopefully you can put stuff together and maybe watch it more than once, ask any questions and I'll answer them or direct you to another video, and uh, hopefully this little uh, piece uh, has uh, helped you. So as always, like, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my books and blog, Patreon, podcast, new playlists, and I'll see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.